Hi, good afternoon, everyone. We are going to get started. We have the governor just arriving. So I'm going to invite all of our speakers to join me. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Thank you all so much for coming uh, today. We are here to celebrate an increase to the minimum wage. The minimum wage was established to provide a fair and livable baseline of income for those who work. But for too long, our country's economy, although growing, the minimum wage stayed flat for our workers, making existing pay disparities even worse, especially for folks who are already economically disadvantaged. In January of this year, we made the fifth and final increase before the minimum wage is indexed to the employment cost index, increasing Connecticut's minimum wage, and that increase will go from $15 an hour to $15.69. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the applause line. <laughs> so we're here today to announce that the minimum wage will increase to $15.69 per hour as a result of our state's first ever economic indicator adjustment. And we're here to announce that. Um, and you see behind me all of the great people who helped make this happen. Um, and we're all excited about it because this is a fair and gradual increase for workers that ensures that as our economy grows, the minimum wage grows with it. And that's good for everyone. So we're, pro we're providing financial security to our families, especially our women and people of color who tend to be our minimum wage workers. An estimated 61% of women in Connecticut and 49% people of color earn the minimum wage. The Center for American Progress estimates that more than 114,000 children in Connecticut live in households with a worker making less than $15 an hour. So our efforts to raise the minimum wage, but also to ensure that it grows as our economy does, are really an important step to lifting our families out of poverty, especially families uh, headed by women minimum wage workers. And it's estimated in Connecticut that there are over 170,000 of those families uh, where women are the main breadwinner and are making minimum wage. And I highlight that because a lot of people think that the minimum wage is something that teenagers make. But no, there are so many adults out there in our, in our state that are trying to support their families. And the good news about this wage increase is that our workers are going to reinvest the money right back into our communities and to right back into our economy. Um, it's an honor for Governor Lamont and me uh, to represent you every day and to work hard to do meaningful things like this. So with that, we are so uh, delighted to have our partners in both municipal and state government joining us today. And I'd like to invite uh, Mayor Tom DeVivo, the town manager, also Jim Rivers of uh, this town, State Representative Susan Johnson, and Senator May Flexer up for a few remarks. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And uh, behind me, I have 
my town council members, Council President Don Niles, and Sue Hunter and Clinton Adams. I want to thank uh, the state legislative branch for doing this for our residents. The other day I was in a meeting in Hartford and you know, you see the demographics of Wyndham. We were 168th in the state of Connecticut for the lowest wage earners. In Wyndham, this really means something. This will help people pay their rent. This will help people keep on top of it so they don't get into homelessness or other issues. This is a very exciting time in our state, and I want to thank all of you for attending and doing this today. And I think next, I'd like to do Senator May. Oh, Susan Johnson. Yeah, Susan Johnson and Susan May Johnson Fletcher. Susan Johnson and, and May Fletcher. Whoever, whoever would like to go first. <laughs> okay. I just want to thank uh, everyone. I'm starting with uh, our mayor, uh, Senator uh, Flexer, and our executive branch, uh, Governor Lamont, and uh, Lieutenant Governor Susan Bicewitz. We're a great team working together to make sure that everybody across the state is treated equally. And this is a great start for us here. We have two homeless shelters here. And we have a couple of soup kitchens. We do a lot of things for people here. And part of the reason is because the minimum wage hasn't gone up for ages. And so having this bill and having it go up is going to help our shelters. It's going to help people stay in their homes. It's going to take care of people in the state. And we have one of the highest income states in the country, but also this is the lowest income community in the state. So having this here, I just can't thank everybody who's worked so hard on this and help us understand this kind of uh, work that's been done and how it's going to help our community, but also as it kind of blends with what's happened in the past that we were discussing earlier uh, this year, and that is the earned income tax credit, which will also help the workers who are going to be bringing more money back to this community. So this will bring money back to the businesses in this community. So I can't thank everybody enough for their good work. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here to celebrate this first automatic increase that we've ever had in our state's minimum wage. You've heard already here today why this law is so important and why so many people, particularly in a community like this one, Wyndham, which by many measures could be described as the poorest community in the state of Connecticut, this is going to have a direct impact in so many families. I grew up in a family where my parents at times earned at or just above the minimum wage and every single penny that came into our house went back out the door. And there are so many families in this community where that is the case. This is going to be life changing. And I'm grateful that this is happening. And frankly, it wouldn't be happening if it weren't for the leadership of the legislature and the leadership of Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz and Governor Ned Lamont this would not be happening. In the past, we've seen increases in our state's minimum wage, but it's always a political battle. Frankly, it took years, and it wasn't until Ned Lamont was our governor that we could actually move forward with a bill that had a $15 minimum wage. But to have the vision to not have this kind of increase be a part of a political process that took two, three, four, or five years to actually become reality, but is now automatic. That took real vision, and I'm so grateful to Governor Lamont and Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz for coming here to our community today to highlight this and to say that here in the state of Connecticut, we are going to recognize how the cost of living is continuing to increase, and families who work so hard to take care of themselves and keep a roof over their head won't have to come to the state capitol to fight for the increase that they've earned. It's going to be automatic, and this automatic increase is going to make a real difference for so many of our neighbors here. And I'm so proud that Connecticut has done this, and we have much to celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Flexer, for your leadership. And it's my pleasure to introduce the president of the Connecticut AFL-CIO, Ed Hawthorne. Thank you, Madam Lieutenant Governor. My name is Ed Hawthorne. I'm proud to represent over 200,000 working men and women as the president of the Connecticut AFL-CIO. And our Labor Federation was proud to lead the charge to pass this legislation to, in 2015 to 15, or 2019 to $15 an hour. 
It was a coalition of workers and community advocates that came together to push legislation. I want to acknowledge that the minimum wage workers who really came forward and told their stories and are the reason why we were able to push this over the finish line and we really worked tirelessly to get this bill passed. As you heard, the legislation has included a first time annual increase. There's the right thing to do and there's the political thing to do. It always looks good when you're hitting doors and you got it on the walk card. I voted to pass the minimum wage, but the real vision that everyone here showed to do the right thing rather than the political thing is something that cannot be left unsaid. This legislation helped accomplish three critical things. First, it means that minimum wage workers will not have the purchasing power to go out there and make those purchases in their community. Second, it increases predictability for businesses and low wage workers in our state. Instead of years where there's no increases and other years where the minimum wage gets bumped so they can catch up, there's a steady rise that tracks inflationary trends. And finally, setting it means that the minimum wage will no longer be subject to politics, like I said, with the, legislator, the legislature. And I just want to take a moment to thank our elected officials that made this a reality. And um, a special thank you goes out to uh, Representative Julie Kushner, Representative Robin Porter, Governor Lamont, Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz, and so many others that you see here today. When we passed this legislation to incrementally increase the minimum wage, hundreds of thousands of workers received a wage. Uh, with the experience what economists had predicted and other states had experienced, that wage growth leads to economic growth. And that's really what we're after here today. I also want to say I hope this can be a lesson for businesses across the country where workers have been forced to go out on strike. From the actors at the SAG-AFTRA and the Writers Guild of America to UAW members striking the big three automakers. Treat your workers with dignity and respect. Pay them fairly. We've done it in the state of Connecticut. If a company's making billions of dollars in profit, that should translate to a raise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. My great pleasure to introduce Governor Ned Lamont. I, I think Ed said it right, you know, pay your workers, show dignity and respect. Uh, this has been a long time coming. You work a full day, uh, you deserve a fair wage, and um, not all of our minimum wage workers have the honor of being covered by a union agreement, and we're doing the best we can, Susan and I, to uh, make up for that. It's a minimum wage. When Susan and I took office um, five or so years ago, the minimum wage was uh, a little bit over $10. Now it's $15.69. Uh, that uh, represents about a $200 a week savings to folks uh, earning the minimum wage. Um, I remember we convened a panel of said, what would a raise the minimum wage mean to you? This was five years ago. And most of these minimum wage workers, they were moms, as Susan said, um, uh, usually women of color. Uh, they said, well, I'm working a job and a half. I'm working two jobs. And if I could get an extra, you know, 50 bucks, um, 100 bucks a week, I'd be able to spend maybe an extra hour a day with my kid in the morning and be home when they came home at the end of the day. Uh, that's what this means. And um, I got to say to Julie and Robin and May and Susan Johnson and all those that um, pushed for this, um, we heard your voice loud and clear, and you made a difference. And, uh, and I got hit hard by the um, lobbyists when we were trying to get this done. And the lobbyists all kept saying, um, you can't do this, uh, Governor. This is going to kill job creation in the state. You can't raise the minimum wage. It's going to kill job creation. Well, I come out of the business world, and I know what is a pro-business, and I don't need, and pro-business is not what some lobbyist tells you it is. And in terms of killing job creation, let me tell you, today they announced we have now surpassed peak employment in the state more than we had pre-COVID. That's a big deal. We have 90-plus thousand jobs going unfilled right now. And I tell a lot of the folks out there, um, you maybe want to pay a little bit more. That's how you get people back working again. You know, Susan mentioned what it means in terms of this is on top of the earned income tax credit. We've raised that uh, about 33 percent as a uh, over the last uh, you know six months. That's going to mean an extra fifty dollars uh, you know uh, a week in your paycheck that you keep on top of twenty five dollars a week, which this extra sixty nine cents represents. This is a big deal. It makes it makes it makes a difference. 
The other thing the lobbyist told me, which I found aggravating, actually, was, um, you know, you're gonna, you think you're just raising the minimum wage for, um, you know, work, and this is also going to uh, increase the uh, pay for middle class families. You're telling me that's a problem? Uh, you're telling me that's a problem? Uh, it's raising up a lot of wages right now. It's making life a little more affordable in this amazing state. And this is on top of our working with them, our friends in the legislature. We got uh, an income tax cut. And what that income tax cut is going to mean in terms of on top of the earned income tax credit, it's going to be savings of another 10% uh, for uh, middle class families earning up to about 150000 or so. And uh, I think work should pay. I think here in this great state of Connecticut should pay. And one other thing, um, Dom, why I'm really happy we're here is um, people often think poverty and minimum wage is all about uh, folks living in our inner cities. And uh, that's, it's severe there, and we're making a difference every day on their behalf. Uh, it's also, there's a fair amount of rural poverty. You heard right here in Willimantic what that means. So this is helping people um, in big cities and small towns across our state. And if we can do this on top of what we're doing in terms of expansion of daycare and child care, making that possible, we can do this on top of um, uh, all the workforce efforts we got in, in debt-free community college. If we can do this and allow you to spend a little more time when you're newborn. I think we're doing a good thing today. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Governor, thank you so much, and we'll take on topic questions. Sure. How, how confident are you of the statistics as to the number of people actually on minimum wage right now, given the, the market? Uh, we certainly see uh, fast food uh, restaurants, retailers offering far above minimum wage. Uh, and I understand this is markets change, and you know this the minimum wage could become more important. But anyway, do you do you have any? Uh, more relevant, uh, I'm sorry, not relevant, more recent statistics about the actual impact. So we think it's going to affect approximately 10% of our workforce, 163,151 employees will be directly affected and will benefit with this change to $15.69. Uh, middle class wages. You're talking about the upward pressure that middle uh, minimum wage increases sometimes exerts on other wages. Yes, um, there are fewer people today earning the minimum wage than before. Um, that's a good thing. Uh, that's because it's a, a strong labor market. And your bigger point, um, Paz, it, uh, raising the minimum wage does put upward pressure on middle class wages in general. And I think that's a good thing. About tying this to the economic cost index versus CPI or something that measures what people are spending at the store? It, it's tied to um, Department of Labor inflation rates, um, and I think that's directly tied uh, to how much uh, people are uh, spending every day. It's gone up, it's expensive, and uh, thanks to Vladimir Putin and the Saudis, uh, we're paying a little more today than we were just uh, two months ago when it comes to gas prices. I think uh, these increases coming into effect on January 1 will make life a little bit more affordable for folks who need it most. The overall poverty rate here than in the rest of the U.S. has been surprisingly static going back to the Great Society programs. It bumps up and down a couple of points, but it's a pretty damn stubborn number. Um, I'll ask you a question you've been certainly asked before about what else should the state be doing to attack poverty. Um, child tax credit is something that you've been pushed on. So what's your latest thinking on that and other ways to attack poverty? Uh, I like what we're doing here in the state to make um, work pay, make it easier for you to get that job, and make sure that if you get that job, you can keep that job. If you're having a baby, we take care of paid family and medical leave. We have covered Connecticut, so if you're earning up to about 65000 60000 we can handle your health care expenses as well. Uh, I think there are a lot of ways we're making life a little bit more affordable for people, and I think that's the way we should go. And um, Mark, I would 
just add that our Workforce Development Council is working across all sorts of industries to give people the training they need for a profession and a career that is good paying, not just a job. So I just add that to what the Gov said. So what do you say to the businesses that probably have spoken before and speaking now about how the wage increases hurt them, that they can't afford to do so? Uh, look, you're a business person, A, you've got to be able to recruit the best and the brightest. I, I think even the minimum wage is making that more diff uh, is not enough in this day and age. You're going to have to pay a little bit more to make it worth it. Two, if you're a business, you want to have people who have enough income that they can maybe go out to a restaurant every once in a while. You want to make sure you have people that can go out and buy things at the store. And uh, if you're just living hand to mouth every day, you can't do that. Raising the minimum wage, not just the minimum wage, what that means for middle class wages, I think help, uh, helps keep this economy moving for everybody. Anyone else? Thank you so much.